Yes, sir. Chris, sir. Are you ready? Are you determined to join our evil, Dark Lord inspired B movie cult group? A, a B movie cult group? Uh, sure. I well maybe. I mean, what what is it, Jim? Chris, we watch terrible, enticing, hilarious movies and report back to the Dark Lord on our discoveries. Yes. Oh, oh, like, like you've got mail. It, it's not quite as good as Sleepless in Seattle. Well, n- what? No, no, not like that at all, Chris. No, it was, it was disappointment. Chris, you're, you're missing my point here. I'm talking about evil, uh, Halloween-inspired, spooky B-movies you would find on the shelf at your local 80s video store, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Like, Kramer vs. Kramer is a pretty sad movie about, like, you know, trying to get, like, the rights to their kids. Maybe, maybe we could talk about that. Again, Chris, you're missing the point. You know what, man? Should we just... Do you want to just watch Hack-A-Lantern from 1988? Hack-A-Lantern? Yeah, sure. I'm down. Let's do it. Jamie, roll it. Crash Movie Bonanza with your hosts, Jim and Chris. So what are we uh what are we here to do folks? Welcome to the show. This is this is Trash Movie Bonanza, a show where two buddies talk about some uh sometimes underwhelming movies or at least schlock. And I'm one half of your hosts. My name is Chris. I host a show called Comic Tropes. With me as always is Guys, Jimmy Jam is the name. Half part-time cult leader, other time freelance illustrator, Kickstarter promoter. Got Link your below. Kickstarter going this month, Savage Street yes. Vigilante. Going well, Jim? Doing great. Super excited. Thanks, you guys, for the love and support out there. And uh, we'll have thank you, Chris, for always. Yes. And, Chris, thank you for always being on board to just shamelessly pimp my stuff with me. I really appreciate it, man. It makes a difference. So I love thank you. I love several things in this world. One is comics. Another, I have to admit, is is horror or just movies in general, but definitely horror. And I don't know about you, but every time October rolls around, what I want to do, I, this is always my goal, watch like one horror movie a day. Sometimes yes. uh, like this year, I'm, I'm way too busy to accomplish that. But that's what I always want to do. Yeah. Aren't you glad that I wasted your time with Hacko Lantern? Hacko Lantern. The- <laughs> the Jag Mundra, the Jag Mundra directed classic from 1988. Because I, I opened before we started recording, I confess to you my absolute unironic true love for this movie. Yes, but it, it is. I mean, this is one of my favorite good bad movies. It is terrible. It, but yeah, it also is. I think a super fun one to watch during the ho- Halloween season because. The movie is oozing with Halloween imagery and, and vibes. I will say that it is not at all scary for what is definitely no. meant to be a horror movie. It's not. Right. It just never has the tension that it wants to create. Uh, and at first, I thought that the acting was sort of so stilted and, and, and everybody's in a different movie, actually. It, it took me a while to get into and about... 20 to 30 minutes in, I was, I, I changed my mind and I definitely see the charm in this. It really reminds me a lot of Troll 2, which is a pretty famous ah, bad movie. Yeah. The, the acting yeah. style really reminds me of that. Yes, I can see that. And you're right on the money about everyone sort of in a different movie. One and- or two of the actors are actually. Uh, good to plausible and one or two are overacting and one or two just cannot deliver a convincing line at all. Like, yes, it, it's stunning. And and at this first I thought everybody was bad. And then it took me a while to just realize like, no, there's just people in totally different places on this yeah, movie. Yeah. yeah. 
And and to set something up real quick, I wanted to shout out Jag Mundra, uh, rest in peace. He was an Indian filmmaker who had like over 37 credits to his name of just terrible B movies hmm. with titles including, Chris, Tales of the Kama Sutra and Sexual Malice. So Ooh. it kind of shows you what this guy made. Oh, yeah. And I, I, and I think like um, – the room and movies like that where you have a foreigner trying to make sort of an American style movie. This is a no disrespect to foreigners, obviously relax no. guys, but this is a foreigner, I think attempting to make an American slasher movie and it's not really a slasher movie. I mean, there are murders, but it's just scenes of strange things happening. And then the star of the movie, high Pike who plays grandpa, just chewing the scenery like oh well thank god he, he does he's so, to me he's fascinating to watch he's so bizarre he talks like this and, and is constantly <laughs> telling his grandson to do the devil horns we were having a good conversation about how bad his th these are the devil horns that grandpa constantly gives whereas they should be this yes there's a because little bit Chris, of a difference what, there Chris, what, what does this mean? This means, this means love. I, or I sorry, love hold you. on, let me think. I and like L for love, you. So if you go like that, yeah, that's sort of like a short sign language for I love you. Yeah. And guess what? I don't think that grandpa loved anybody except maybe <laughs> the dark Lord. He did love Satan. And an idea I had too, man, was like, what if they took, this same premise, a real filmmaker. And there was like an A24 version of Hack O' Lantern mm. where it's like, it takes place on Halloween. There's this crazy grandpa who's the leader of a satanic cult. He commits incest with his own daughter on her wedding day. The son is then groomed to, to be part of this satanic cult. It's kind of, it could be a creepy, cool, dark idea, but done in this B movie, it's so silly and misses the mark. You've described a big idea within it, but the problem is that that idea isn't necessarily the same as a plot. There's not that, that's the problem is that like we've got the relationships and the premise and stuff. But it does it. It's inert sometimes. Like it doesn't move mm -hmm. forward because it's like, who is the main character? Is it Grandpa or is it his grandson slash maybe son Tommy? Who's driving the actions forward? Kind of nobody. Kind of a bunch right. of things happen. So you're right. There's a germ of an idea here, but basically, we're following a Halloween night. There is a killer out there. Nobody's really tracking the killer down or aware of the killer, though. <laughs> no. So it's just no. a bunch of stuff. Bill sort of builds to a, a Halloween party, the town Halloween party. And this is also a movie that has no problem taking its time with people just like walking across a room, etc., as well as an interlude for a full music video that has nothing to do with the movie and a full stand-up routine that has nothing to do with the movie. Yes. And I know yeah. I'm jumping all around. I'm just trying to, to, to uh, wet people's appetite for what we'll be talking about. Yeah. And speaking of wetting appetites, Chris, can we break the standard format? And can I just get Jamie to show a huge scene of the, you're the devil's son music video within this movie performed by DC LaCroix with Tommy's rock and roll fantasy is to not be the lead singer, not be the lead guitarist, but a guy who stands in the background of a, of a satanic band plays a little guitar and then a demonic shaman, sexy girl uses laser vision to destroy him, take out the band. And then she, murders Tommy by stabbing him in the throat with a trident. It, it It's incredible, man. It's incredible. You're, you're the devil's son, Chris. Let's see. You're the devil's son.
there's so much weird about this. I, I would love to break it down somewhat in chronological order if you were okay with it, because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's it's a weird movie that you've introduced me to. This was definitely my first time seeing it, Jim. And, you know, it's about an hour and a half, but it starts with a full two minutes of just credits to, to some rock and music, you know, just, just text music. And the... <laughs> The funny thing is, we get introduced to 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 just Grandpa. I don't think he has a name beyond Grandpa, does he? No, it's just Grandpa. It's just Grandpa, played yeah. by character actor High Pike. In and in, in in one of at least three scenes, he's just driving his pumpkin truck like a maniac. He just yeah is constantly driving this pickup truck full of pumpkins at full speed. Uh, yes. I guess that's his job. He's a pumpkin wrangler or a pumpkin farmer when he's not the leader of the satanic cult in this small little town. High Pike, I think he, he does have a short scene in Blade Runner. Yeah. Other than that, he was in movies with titles like, and I'm not making this one up, folks, The Erotic Adventures of Don Quixote. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds that sounds like a Simpsons joke. Yes. You might Is remember me from movies like The Erotic Adventures of Don Quixote. Dude, I was just going to reference Troy McClure. Like that sounds like a Troy McClure movie, The Erotic Adventures of Hercules, right? That's in yeah, the Simpsons. I guess that was one. <laughs> um and 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 I didn't recognize anybody else, but I guess the adult Tommy did a few things. Dude, adult Tommy is most well known to new to modern audiences now as playing Max Dad and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Right. Do you know what I'm talking about? That didn't that, even that's, come to that's, me. That's, that's Gregory Scott Cummins. And so whenever Mac goes to jail and his psychotic dad with the short beard and the slick back hair and the wild eyes. Oh my God. That's Tommy in this movie. That's so he's awesome. still acting. He's still around. Yeah. Um, he's got a look, man. He looks yes. scary. Yeah. So and that was also good. Chris. I, this is a trope of all, a lot of the movies we watch is not to jump too far ahead, but modern day Tommy in this movie, I'm assuming is supposed to be, in his twenties or twenty-one years old, he's he's played by a thirty-seven-year-old man. I mean, this yeah, is he. Tom, I, <laughs> I totally picked up on that because, like, it jumps forward in time, like in in a few seconds, and, and we start with like the younger family, and jumps forward, and yeah, he's he's much older than the rest of his family. The rest of his family mm -hmm. has aged a certain amount, and he's aged a lot. But he's yeah. all like, yeah, he's he's treated like he's. 2021 20, yeah it but this is a in the beginning yeah and it's odd cuz in the beginning of the movie it's set up that Tommy is a little kid and his grandpa have this special relationship like his grandpa dra drops off a pumpkin and gives him a gift and we learn later that the gift is this sort of like pentagram sat satanic it's a medallion, uh, medallion. and uh the mom right off the bat it's it's known that she's it's established that she's concerned about Tommy and his relationship with Grandpa. When did you see Grandpa, Tommy? Did he give you that pumpkin? What else did he give you? Nothing. I mean, yeah. it, it's hilarious because right off the bat, Tommy gets a pumpkin and, and starts carving it. It's daytime, but he's just carving it like right away by himself. And they get distracted by, I guess, the younger brother who just jumps out and he says, Trick or treat, give me all your candy or I'll blow your head off. <laughs> Such a funny yeah. line. Yeah. And Tommy cuts himself and starts slurping down his own blood. Yeah. And we're like, Very oh, strange. Tommy's off. Tom yeah. It, it, it's so funny, like how strongly this movie leans into telling us like hey be careful of this kid y yes yeah it's overcompensation and uh it, you know it, it i i don't think the director knew what pacing was and like I what agree. because he's also credited in the editing so it's like 
dude, you directed this, but you also being involved with the editing, like the pacing and the storytelling is is in your hands, man. Like it's you lackadaisical, know, it, the pacing. It, yeah. It's it's very yeah. much like if somebody is doing something mundane, like getting into the car. You know, like we could start a scene with somebody in the car, but this is the kind of movie that would follow them walking across the field and getting into the car. And then when it comes time for like a kill scene, it almost just happens and like ends the second somebody gets killed. Yeah. And you're like, you know, like this movie should be about an hour and a half, but that pacing should all be on like the tension of building up to a potential kill, like where we, the audience, know somebody's in danger. Instead, usually a killer just sort of wanders in, kills someone, and we're out. Yes. This masked killer with the, the like the demonic mask, the cloak. It's and, not a you bad, know, we. It's not a bad look. It's a cool killer with the trident. Yeah. And, and like on the poster it's a good of mask. Jamie. You know, we. Uh, oh, and if Jamie, if you didn't show the poster yet, we, we can show the no, poster. No, you would have shown it, it at the beginning. Jamie, Jamie's it, a pro. It, J- Jamie knows his business. He he knows what's up. Thanks, editor, um, Jamie. But yeah, man, and you know, after the the bloody hand scene with Tommy, it's established that his father Bill goes to confront Grandpa, right. and lo and behold, Chris, Grandpa is in a barn with his satanic cult, and they're all cloaked figures, and um, some ritualistic uh, evil is, right. is happening. But before we can even really understand the gravity of, of exactly what this group is, uh, Bill gets a claw hammer to the back and, and it's just like, I guess he's dead right away. And then grandpa puts him in a car and lights it on fire and goes, burn in hell. Bill. Burn in hell. Bill, <laughs> there's like this <laughs> long pause and it just sort of undercuts how serious yeah. the threat is. Yes, it's <laughs> Bill. But man, um, grandpa's demonic laugh, though, you oh, know, that, that so good. I also made a note for Jamie to have the audio on that shot where the the car is burning. Grandpa's kind of lit up by the flames and, and just... Again, High Pike, I feel like he's having a blast making this movie. I hope uh, so. He's just, it just seems like a fun, silly character to play. And he's just like, part of the time I'm going to talk like Tom Waits. The other time I'm going to say things where you can't fully understand what I'm saying. And then I'm going to demonically laugh. And it, he it's all over. He has an accent. This is like filmed in California, right? I mean, there's yeah. the California mountains yeah. and stuff, but grandpa has an accent like he's from Missouri or Kentucky, somewhere in like, you know, sort of like the the mid south. And it's hilarious. He sounds a lot like uh the the super southern coach in the Adam Sandler movie The Water Boy, where every once in a while you can't quite understand him. He talking a lot a little bit like this. Yes. Yeah. There's a scene later that I want to point out when Grandpa drives up to where um, the location of the Halloween party is. And he's talking to uh, Tommy's brother. And he's just like, gobbledygooey, you ain't going to let me have no fun. And it's like, what is he saying? What? The first time you see the movie, you're like, is this dialogue? Like, what is he just making noises? It, <laughs> that's the that's the shit that I love, though, dude. Where the, the, again, the the editor, the director is the editor, and he's like, just leave that in, leave that that scene in. Yeah, it's fine. I I feel like I I don't know. I mean, supposedly there was a script, but it, it feels like sometimes the actors were allowed to improvise, and then there's an awkward pause as the other actor will like take that in that they weren't expecting and then respond that that's the stiltedness of it. It's not always the delivery itself from the actor. It's like, there's these pauses between like they, they were like, Oh, he's going to say that. I guess I'll respond with uh yeah, grandpa. It's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, and you know, one thing that does help though is in a, most of the scenes, 
most of the characters are talking about their relationships to each other. Oh, so yeah. when Tommy's sister is with her friend, Beth, she's like, hey, let's go see Tommy, my brother. Oh, your Constantly. brother, Tommy. And, 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 and that happens throughout the movie. And it is kind of helpful because when I was taking notes, I was like, oh, that's right. Vera is Tommy's sister. Beth is her friend. Right. Ro- Roger's the other brother. So it's, it is helpful if you're – guys, if you want to impress your friends and take notes on this movie so you know all the characters, the movie makes it very easy to So do easy. That. It's like that this was designed for uh, Quibi, like to be de- delivered in 10 minute <laughs> chunks. And it's like, let's recap these people that have short term memory problems. Uh, yes. <laughs> remember, this is Tommy. This is Roger. And you can tell because they go like, Tommy, I am your brother. Yes. As you know, Roger, I yeah. am your grandfather. You know, things like that are yeah. constantly being said. Uh, but. So we've had Bill get killed. Uh, seems like only mom is depressed about that, by the way. So maybe he wasn't a great dad. I don't know. Uh, yes. But we jump forward to to adult Tommy, way adult Tommy. And he just, he lives in the basement. Yes. A very and barren it's basement. In a very, with a very small, single sad mattress on the on the hard concrete ground a couple beer posters hanging on the walls and like a chin-up bar and a workout area so he can get buff and when he works and, out uh, he ties on a green headband to look like rambo yes yes chris it's just what he does <laughs> and i don't know if you noticed but like he also has graffiti on his concrete wall and it's almost yeah. like the kind of thing you suggested to me once where it just says spit. It says something like sex. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I just like to imagine the day he was bored and he was like, what do I like? Sex. Yeah. Yeah. Lucifer. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> He's got a poster for a movie that just says something like witch. <laughs> yes. It's such a boring Ooh. barren like apartment type thing. Chris, we'll be we'll be reviewing Rich Witch on our next uh, show. We'll be reviewing that movie. <laughs> We've got a good one coming next time, folks. Not that this one isn't. Uh, and then there's like a radically unpleasant flashback scene where Grandpa like talks to the mom of the family, and they get a flashback, and and like he yeah he assaults her on her wedding night. I think I think pretty much every woman in this movie gets topless yes i I think so yeah including the mom because of the assault yeah i was like yeah what is this it's unpleasant but i i think and you tell me you've seen it a million times i took that to to imply that tommy was actually grandpa's son not grandson yes you think so yeah 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 because Grandpa, when he confronts Bill before Bill gets murdered, Grandpa's like, Tommy's not even your son. He belongs to something bigger, you know. Oh, and so you've alluding seen to it a couple of times. I didn't pick up on that yeah. when it happened the first time because that that scene happened before the assault. So I, I didn't put that together. Yeah. I saw so he little... he's been indoctrinated into the cult. Yeah. There are little hints. I okay. mean, they do establish that a little bit, but it. When it gets gets to the idea, though, it's like, oh well, that's a creepy idea. Like this kid's, it's super creepy. Grandpa is actually his dad, so yeah, it. That's why Grandpa is focusing on Tommy, and this day in particular is Halloween, and he's been grooming Tommy. But I guess the impression is tonight is the official induction of Tommy into Grandpa's satanic cult. Yeah, this is the big day. Tonight is the ceremony. Yeah. And we should probably talk about the mom's motivation because, you know, she just every scene we have with the mom says, I just want to keep my family together. All I want is to keep my family together. And I go, what are you talking about? Like your grandpa, I mean, your father, who's a horrible person, you're still in touch with him. Uh, yes. Roger and Vera are both good kids that both live at home, even though like one of them has a job as a police officer already and even tommy the dark you know dark horse of the family the black sheep he still lives at home 
He's not yes. that much of a badass. He still lives yeah. at home. He just lives in the basement. And I'm just yeah. like, what are you talking about? Like your family, like I want to keep my family together. Like no one is going anywhere. Yes. None of them even talk <laughs> about like, I want to go to college the other state over. There's no scenes like that. And she just keeps crying to each child going, I just want to keep my family together. Yes. And like the it. basement door. The basement door of the house where Tommy lives, there's scenes of mom like banging on Tommy's door and crying and being like, Tommy, you have to get your life together. Tommy, you, I need to talk to you. Tommy, you've got to stop all this. And it's like, he's just in the basement working out. Like what? what is like, what's the concern? I mean, I know she's concerned because he is hanging out with grandpa, but it's also like, He's just a loser who lives in the basement. Like, he he's is just, a loser because uh, it's like they treat him like he's a badass because he walks around wearing all black. You know, he wears sleeveless shirts. He he he's got a slutty girlfriend in this movie, but we never see him do anything that's a crime. You know, we don't even like right. He doesn't do right. any drugs. He doesn't steal. The closest we come is a little later from this. Uh, his sister Vera is about to have sex with her boyfriend, Brian, Tommy overhears them. So he just comes in and, and beats the crap out of Brian and throws him out of the house. Yeah. But I'm like, okay, he's overprotective as a brother, but that wasn't evil. You know what I mean? It was. Yeah. There's nothing that really tells us that Tommy is evil, except he just is sullen looking. He's always, he just, he's yeah. surly. He, He's bug eyed and he overreacts greatly to his sister getting a little action. Whenever that scene happens and I, and I watch the movie, I'm like, Tommy, why do you care? Like yeah. your sister and her boyfriend. It's not even a strange guy. It's her, it's um, right. his, it's his sister's boyfriend. It's like, they're on her bed getting a little frisky. Like, why do you care, dude? Like go back to the basement, weird. go back to your basement and lift more weights, Tommy. Yeah. Like, let your sister Have get sex some with action. your girlfriend. It, yeah. Uh, played by Chris, played by uh, porn star Jenna Fine. Wait, who played who? He, uh, uh, Jenna Fine plays Tommy's girlfriend, the, the spiky haired oh. blonde with the pentagram Sharpie tattoo on her butt cheek. Uh, yeah, I think that character's name might have been Nora. Uh, yeah, she 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 looked great. She looked like the uh, singer from Roxette from the 80s, like with the yes. hair and everything. Yes. That was a look Good that reference. we don't have anymore. Yeah. Ladies, bring that look back, please. We we want that look. That was the classic like way that Mark Silvestri would draw Dazzler. Dazzler went from like, you know, the 70s roller skating <laughs> disco queen to like 80s pop star. It was cool. Yeah. Well said. Got to yeah. work in a comic book reference somewhere. It, uh, hey man, it's it's appropriate. The next scene seems like it would be unnecessary, but it actually I'll give the script some credit. It does set up a few things. We we next get a scene where uh, the youngest sister, uh, Vera, is taking a bubble bath. And at first I'm like, oh, it's an excuse for her to be naked. Sure. Her friend Beth comes in and puts like a, a fake spider on, on, on where the loofah sponge is. And she like, you know, starts washing herself and like freaks out like, ah. <laughs> and at first I'm going like, OK, it was just an excuse to see her naked, I guess. But technically, after that, Vera doesn't trust Beth because she she thinks Beth is always pulling a prank. It's that boy who cried wolf thing that got set up. Y yes. Yeah. That'll that come, does come back later. Way later, folks. Way yes. later tonight. Yeah. Uh, but also, that's pretty weird to wa just walk into the bathroom where your friend is taking a bath and like do a prank on them and then just yes. still hang out and talk to them while they dry off and stuff. Yeah. She gets out of the tub fully nude and Beth is like putting a robe over her. And it's like, this is a really open, free friendship that you guys have. Like, yeah. like interrupting each other's like bath time and like I, may, I, is this a girl thing i don't know but i've never been our opening sketch uh jim I, oh God. you're taking a bubble bath and i just come in and <laughs> yes. put a spider on you and you're like ah chris let's have a good conversation 
<laughs> the effort of us doing intros is I physically have a bathtub behind me. And like, that's the opening skit. Like these guys are really going all out for the Cut Halloween like episode. Jim lugging like a, a, a <laughs> foot claw, like porcelain tub into <laughs> his, into his loft. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is a lot of effort for the show guys. Anything uh, for a, for a quick joke. It's just oh funny God. because that is definitely an example of the style that this film is in where there are important things sort of being relayed by the dialogue, but it's not how normal people act. Nothing yes. in here is normal. After the bath scene, it's established that um, uh, Beth likes <laughs> Roger, <laughs> right? Beth likes she Roger. She meets you. Roger. Cause they're all at their house and every, there's a flirtation house. and yeah, uh, yeah she's attracted to him right away. And, and after that, like for the rest of the movie, she's saying wildly inappropriate things to her friend. Beth is constantly saying like, does he look as good out of his uniform? Yeah. You know? And then like later they're like, they, they just have sex right away basically. And then like, uh, she's like, I want to show you where we had sex. Yes. You're like, what is this relationship between Beth and Vera? It's so weird. Yeah, you get yeah. Vera it's written by takes a guy. Beth. Yeah. Vera takes Beth through the cemetery to show her, like, hey, here's where I uh, We had sex over brother. there. That's that's all that's that was. It. It's so weird. But we are skipping <laughs> over briefly, like that. This is where that music video came in. Oh my god. Which is just so strange. And yet, like we've already mentioned it. But it's um I I noted like the time codes here and it's uh it's th three full minutes of a music video that it it could have been longer and I could have been longer like, for me you know was anybody from the band or that like voodoo dancer woman gonna come back to the movie I think it was just to pad the time yes yeah because Chris Tommy's fantasy in this video is to be in a rock and roll band but. In the reality of the movie, he's not a musician. He's not no. an aspiring musician. No. It's just he sits down, puts on the headphones, and his fantasy is just like to be in a satanic rock band, I guess. Or, yeah, but not be the star. <laughs> he has such low ambitions. It's another thing that makes him seem not that scary, even though like we're totally we're totally supposed to think that he's a bad guy. We're supposed to yeah. think that. <laughs> anyway, yeah. it's wild, so we get man. that. We I, get like Roger and Vera flirting, uh, and then we meet um, Nora, which is yeah. uh, Tommy's girlfriend. She's buying a bunch of beer, so you know that that's no yeah. good. Uh, yeah, everybody in town is, is in the beer store, like lusting after her. She's got this very fake tattoo on her butt cheek because she's wearing short shorts. It's incredible. It's it's so great. And then, yeah, her and Tommy, It's not, it seems like they're getting ready for a little fun day of debauchery with each other. And then Grandpa randomly strolls by and he alludes to, no hanky-panky for you, Tommy. Go home. You have to stay pure for the ceremony. Ordinarily, I'd say screw her brains out, but I don't think that little witch has got any. But where's your head, Tommy? You know you must be pure for tonight. That's like the allude. He's alluding to <laughs> yeah. You don't get to have sex with your yeah, which is of course girlfriend. something very important to Satan. He's famously against uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sex out of wedlock. Satan's a prude. He's, Satan is a prude. Oh, goodness. Uh, any, <laughs> kill and steal as much as you want, but s consensual sex before marriage? No. <laughs> exactly. That's this yeah. version of Satan, I guess. Yes. Oh. He's a cartoon character. He, he was an angel at one point. I guess he retained some of those uh, morals. Oh, goodness, yeah, yeah. Tommy. I shan't let you into my club if you act like that. Not with this girl of loose morals with the Sharpie tattoo she has a on tattoo her butt cheek. For me. That that washes off. It fades off later when she's in the pool. It's oh, like, you guys it. couldn't you couldn't redraw? The, it's like, we don't have time for that. No, we, no, it, no. It's awesome. <laughs> Got to keep moving. Got to keep moving. It's, um, it's great. What's the next important scene? Oh, yeah. Just like Roger 
decides to sort of confront Tommy as though he's being bad or something, even though there's no yeah. real inciting incident. And then Tommy is just like, look at this. And he opens up a closet. He's got a little altar there to, to Satan. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. With the swords crossed and, and the, you and know, the candles pentagram. are already on. He opens yeah. the closet and the candles are all lit. Yeah. Dangerous. So Chris, this, this brings up a point of the movie that is such a WTF vibe of the whole film, which is when Roger sees the satanic altar, he's like, now I understand why mom's worried about you hanging out with grandpa. There's this idea in the movie of like, does the whole town know that grandpa is the leader of this satanic cult and they sort of don't care? It's not really that big of a deal. It's just I like, I think so. Uh, grandpa, do you think grandpa's up to some shady stuff, you guys? I, I don't know. Well, I, I think know. you're right because there's even like a scene towards the end of the movie where Vera goes to confront Tommy and she just knows that he's with grandpa in the barn with like the satanic cult. They don't, it seems like people don't know exactly what they do, but there's they seem to all be vaguely aware that there's yeah. a cult. And they're just like, eh, let bygones be bygones. You do your cult yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And when murders start happening in the town, no one there's no scenes of any characters asking, like, do you think grandpa or his crew could be suspects? Do you think this is a shady situation? Do you think that it's just Oh, some shady things are happening on Halloween. So it's been like th almost 30 minutes since that first kill of like the dad, it, which is in a horror movie, kind of a long time. I guess we need mm -hmm. to get to know these characters so that we care about them a little. But we're, we're, we're at our second kill, which is we're following Nora basically swimming around topless in her, in her pool. Technically, she's got a shirt on, but it's completely see-through. <laughs> yes. Goes to take a shower, gets out of the shower. There's a lot. We, we need to see her naked to, to know her. We need to yeah, know her yeah. and care about her. Yeah. She sees a person in this devil mask standing right outside the window and goes like, oh, and then like just lets them right in, assuming it's Tommy. Yeah. So that's another yeah. reason why, like, yeah, maybe everybody just knows that Grandpa and Tommy are in a cult. Yeah. it. But yeah, you're right. She she has no apprehension with just none letting this person in. She makes herself a drink and makes the killer a drink. And then, gets naked. lo and behold, she gets naked to seduce him and then gets murdered with the uh, trident. Not a trident. Um, uh, that is called a garden cultivator. Garden cultivator. The three-pronged yeah. thing. Yes. You're right that it's probably meant to be reminiscent of a trident, but it, 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 when it's hooked like but that. But you, you're right. Yeah, I, it's not I had to look it up. I was like, what the hell is that garden tool called? It's not yeah. like a hoe, but it's like on a long pole. And I was just like, what the hell is this thing? And what's it, what's it called again? Garden cultivator. Okay. It's like when you want to like, you know, yeah. big trenches. Yeah. Yes. For seeds. Yeah. Very scary. Um, you can get one at your local Home Depot, guys. You can get one tomorrow. I, I picked up a couple things during this kind of ridiculous scene. One, Nora has a bathroom that has a door that goes straight to the outside. Who the hell designs a bathroom like that? Yeah. I've never yeah. seen a bathroom like that. It's like, uh, if this is shot in LA, which I, I know it was, is that like a pool house bathroom? Oh. It has it like, is that a kind of thing? Do you know what I'm saying? You're it, probably right, Jim. Maybe, yeah, maybe it, it's just sort of like, yeah, or even a guest house bathroom or something like that. Yeah. That makes a little bit of sense. But I was just like, I really was confused, like seeing her sort of step out of the shower and open the door to the outside world. I was like, huh? I've never seen that right. before, but I guess you're right. Like it could be a pool. Like it, somebody's got money. Nora's slumming. She's it. very, she's very successful. This but, but Chris, you're is, not, you're not going to see, you're not going to see a bathroom like that in the Midwest in a house in the Midwest. 
Like, that doesn't exist. I'll that also it, say you've, you'll, you won't see one like that in the Northeast where I grew up. I, I just hadn't seen that. But I but you lived in L.A. You, you, you went to the fancy parties with the movie stars and <laughs> every weekend, every weekend. Every weekend. I, I was I was at a party with Jag Mundra, the, the, the director of this movie before he passed. You're right? at the, the Playboy no. Mansion in the grotto, just walking yeah, into it bathrooms. Was, it was wild. The other thing <laughs> is. And you don't have to confirm if I'm right or wrong, but right at this point, I go, that isn't Tommy. Who else would would be like angry right now? The only one I could think of was I go, it'd be too cliche for it to be Tommy or grandpa. I go, I think the mom is the killer. I, mm-hmm. it, I'm, I'm 30 minutes in and, or you 34. And, okay. Yeah. And I just go, eh, the mom sort of is like so emotional about like, I want to keep my family together. I go, she's the killer. Yeah. There's not really any other suspects unless it would maybe the real red herring, maybe Roger. Except but, they sort of play uh, with that, too, at the very end, which we'll get to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, and, Chris, you know, this we, we don't expect you wouldn't expect this to be any different. But obviously the killer when he's she's in her he's in the outfit, whatever, yeah. with the mask. It's played by a male actor. Obviously, he has. I think stature so. and height, but then you know. But I didn't it think it was as tall as Tommy. To be... Basically, I, I maybe I'm wrong. It just like I look because Tommy's pretty tall. Yeah, taller than yeah. everybody else in the movie. Yeah. Uh, it, it. What did you think of the kill itself? It, it was okay. It was okay. You it kind wasn't... of. It, this is a movie where like the actual like impact is never seen. We usually get a split second shot after like the kill. Yeah. And and that was like, okay, make up for that. Although it looks a little silly having a garden tool in your head, but like, yeah, yes. I, I thought it was okay. Yeah. Average kills, man. An average amount of gore. Like it's not, is this gorier than the Friday the 13th movies we watched? No. Or the no. same level, basically. Maybe the same level, but the Friday the 13th movies, as like schlocky as they are, I would say they still build up the tension of somebody in danger a little bit more. Yeah, that's true. Th- this one, like, I don't know. I mean, it was kind of obvious she was going to get killed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we get the second kill uh, and then we get what? Oh, yeah. This is where we briefly meet Brian, who I thought was going to be a more important character because uh, Vera and Beth uh, and Brian, who is the boyfriend of little sister Vera, they're all setting up the town Halloween party. The big party. And Brian meets grandpa and is like protective because, again, grandpa is acting like a total lech he's just like my my you've grown up into such a pretty thing i'm like yeah granddaughter it's so weird and inappropriate it's so inappropriate yeah and and so like i kind of liked brian actually because he steps in and he goes uh that's okay dude yeah and and then she's like no it's okay that's my grandpa even creepier, even creep, and, and and it's like uh, Vera. That doesn't change the situation. That doesn't make it less creepy that this is your grandpa. Brian is still freaked out, and he should be freaked out because this is weird. And and then this is like this is the 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 for me the most dull point in the movie because there's about three minutes of. Vera, Beth, Brian, Grandpa, and Roger all just sort of having tiny little chats for for minutes on end outside of this place. None of it is important at all. And it's a great example of what we were just talking about, where people are recapping their own identities to each other, going like, well, if it isn't my grandson, and uh, you are my brother. Roger Drendel, my grandson in uniform. Ain't you the good two shoes that gave you them guns? Think about that, Roger. All right, pretty damn ingenious. After all, you're my brother. That's hilarious. Maybe the 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 only thing that's set up is that Roger is an actual cop, and he's going to be 
chaperoning the dance, the Halloween party that night. Except like, I thought that, that, that was setup, hinted at when when they first met each other at home. Oh shit! Yeah, you're probably yeah. You, so you're it right all felt that. redundant to me. I was just yeah. like, got it, got it, like the repetition. But then, Chris, we get the famous scene though of Grandpa getting back in his truck and Roger leaning through the window and being like. You stay out of trouble tonight, old man. And then we get the gobbledygoo Gabbledy-goo. dialogue of Grandpa. Of like, a man can't raise saying? a little hell. I say, damn your job. If it means your grandpa can't have any fun on Halloween. <laughs> well, what's wrong with raising a little hell? Oh, can't be having no fun tonight on Halloween. It's like, oh. Man, the only thing that would make this better is if there were like two grandpas from each side of the oh family and they both talked like that to each other. Oh, grandpa number two, you going to raise some hell tonight? Oh, my God. Yeah, that uh, that would be like an experimental Tim and Eric skit or something that would just go on yeah. and on and on. Two satanic uh, cults. Two different, two different satanic cults, each competing to recruit Tommy because he's the prime candidate. There you go. I've improved. We're, re- we're rewriting Hack Lantern, guys. From there, we cut to uh, the scene we've already mentioned where Tommy overhears Vera and Brian beats him up and throws him out of the house. Uh, oh, and then we see, though, that Tommy does have one of those devil masks. Yes. So that, yeah, that's like, oh, he, he's got to be the killer. He's got the mask. Right. And it's, it's like, no, that mask is just available at the corner general store in this town and everyone has them. It is. They're, they're, they're nine ninety nine, Chris. And Tommy's just preparing his bag of, of treats for the satanic ritual. Cause he also shows like his switchblade and then he puts the headband on again to like get out for the night to, to, to prepare. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Uh, and, and Brian has a long scene that in any other horror movie would be tense, where he's walking through a wide open cemetery, absolutely nowhere somebody could hide, but we see a point of view shot every once in a while of the killer clearly following him, but he keeps looking around and can't see anything. And then he finally runs all weird. Brian has a weird run. Yeah. (laughs) He starts... Taken off. And also, you know, it's obviously the middle of the day. Sun's the out. Day. Every, almost every scene in this movie is. Yeah. Open landscape of this cemetery. No bushes or areas for anyone to hide. Brian falls into an open grave that actually has a skull and bones in right. it. Who dug that? Did the killer dig, it, it, uh, you know, up a, a grave and like... Why is there not a coffin, for instance? It's just, yeah, Brian, it like reaches like to, to get himself up and he finds a skull. And, I, and I'm and i going like, I don't understand what this is implying. I just don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Um, he also, Brian does. The, the killer show, shows up over the, the hole. It's the devil mask and the, and the cloak. And Brian asks for help now. <laughs> yes. Help? A little help? I was like, so you were afraid of an unseen person, but as soon as you see a cloaked individual with a devil mask, you think that they might just lend a helping hand to pull you out there. Brian, you got the big brain. Yeah, yeah. Brian does get murdered. He's out of the movie. A shovel, a shovel to the head. Not a terrible kill for Brian. Like it actually kind of cool. It's short, but... yeah, the the makeup of like the 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 shovel sort of embedded into the skull looks kind of decent, but it's one of those weird kills where it's it's a second or two, you know, like it's only a frame or two that we get to see of it. Yeah, yeah, it is what it is for this movie. It's not Evil Dead, that's for sure, guys. No, there's another <laughs> moment here, and I'll just mention it for Jamie of the mother saying like, "All I want to do is keep my family together." Yes, we remember. <laughs> We remember. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then we get finally, we finally get to see the the cult uh, uh, with grandpa in charge. I, I'm wondering, what did you think of grandpa's outfit? 
you're, you're I thought the- it was great. It's basically what I'm wearing right now. A cloak. Yeah. And a flannel shirt underneath. Oh, oh, yes. I know exactly what you're talking Yes. The threatening red and black flannel, Chris. This is satanic. It feels so satanic- like he just sort of half-assed his own cult to me. Yeah. He was like, I'm going to put on the cloak. You know, we're going to have all everybody else in the red cloaks and devil masks. Got a pentagram on the on on the floor of the barn. We've we've all got our s- knives and our cauldrons and stuff. But, you know, I'm still going to wear my jeans and flannel. Like no offense. <laughs> yeah. This is my comfort Could, clothes. Uh, you know, Satan's fine costuming- with it. I'm I'm wondering if costuming had something else in mind and high pike the actor was like I'm just going to hang out in the jeans and the flannel underneath the cloak like I'm fine I think so I don't want to I don't want to get in an uncomfortable like black all black like I'm just I'll wear the flannel it's fine like it'll be slimming high nah I'm good I'm good like this <laughs> yes uh with the deadly satanic ritual right is finally finally underway is it me or is like this satanic cult like really not i yes they killed the dad bill at the beginning but aside from that like the stuff they get up to is it's not that bad <laughs> yeah they're just hanging out in a barn there's a naked girl there and i'm like oh my yeah. god are they gonna sacrifice her uh no not sacrifice they they put the uh pentagram tattoo on her butt Yes. Which so she's is wrong. Like a, she's like a new recruit, I, I, yeah. I'm assuming. Don't get me wrong. Cult, brainwashed cults are, are, are not great. It's just that we don't really see them doing that much that's so bad. Yeah. Yeah. It seems pretty innocent. And then cut from that to Roger and Beth hooking up in the cemetery. Yeah. Unless you had more on the satanic cult. No, I didn't. Because it. Okay, <laughs> I guess it just establishes. Yeah. Okay, it, you know, it's the night of the the, it's the night of the ceremony, and this is part one. Uh, yeah, Roger and uh, Roger seems like a real sort of um, not quite goody two shoes, but you know what I mean. Like he follows things by oh, the book. Yeah. He's yeah, like he's you know super... blonde hair, like clean cut, like he. Yeah, he's c- kind of like a Ken doll. He, it's alluded that he's like the the, the clean square of, of of the group. Except you know? he does then take like bang Beth like right away, right there yes. on the ground. <laughs> yeah, in 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 the cemetery, and uh, there's the gag of Beth reaching down and grabbing what she thinks is his hand, but it's the hand of the corpse of Brian. Well, famously, a um, freezing cold rigor mortis stiff hand covered in dirt is what a cop's hand normally feels like, you know, like they've got those tough working man hands. That's I forgot about that. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I kept thinking she was going to like look down and go, ah, no, she just bangs Roger while holding a corpse's hand. Yes. So I guess they had sex, even though we see them totally like flat on the ground, somehow, also, Brian is covered in dirt underneath them. I it doesn't like spatially make sense to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, that's that famous editing by one more time the director editor J- J- Jag Mundra. He thought that one through. Jag, we we love him. He's uh, a trash movie hero. Oh, Jim, I talked about how amused I was that we have a full. Um, music video and we have a full stand-up routine later i forgot this is when the the stripper entertains the entire town there's an extended sequence folks at the halloween party everybody in town is wearing you know their traditional like you know cat or cowboy or ninja outfits and a stripper Mm -hmm. just strips there and everyone's like yay yeah this is a very progressive small town. And dude, it's full nude. She takes yeah. off her top and bottoms. Yeah. The the drummer of the band is still playing and there's music, but the rest of the band is just standing there watching. And it's like, what kind of party is this? What Roger's what kind of there town chaperoning is it? and he's just sort of like into it too. He's just like, yeah. Yeah. But it's funny because it isn't like a stripper for like, yeah, like one or two of our main characters. It's like there's, there's a, there's 20 to 30 extras 
all sorts of different people. And they're all just like happily watching a stripper. Yeah. Classic it's, Halloween entertainment. Did you grow up uh, may, going to your town stripper, Bob for apples, uh, and then watch the stripper? Every year, every year. It, 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 it makes your brain just scream like, wait, what is happening? This isn't how things work. This isn't. And then before you can answer that, man, cut to the outside of the party where I'm assuming one of the producer's nephews or sons gets his own five, six minute long stand up routine on camera that's in the movie. Now boy, you know, she reminded me of one of those girls from the girly magazine. Did you ever see those girls in the girly? Like my favorite part in there is, is the naked girl. I love the naked girls. <laughs> but now I got a favorite brand new part, the little memo. I mean, they say things, for example, like, I'm just a conservative girl. <laughs> Total non sequitur. Like what? No is main this? characters watching this. No. He's just entertaining the extras. And the jokes are barely jokes. He, he does a lot of physical comedy. He's like, hey, everybody get a, a, like the stripper. You ever see in those nudie mags where they're like, uh, I want, you know, to to go play tennis. And then he's like, you know, spreading his legs and stuff. And, and it's so awkward because instead of like uproarious laughter, there's like about this much laughter. <laughs> huh. yeah. It's so quiet like I, all the all the extras look like you know they're paying attention and they're smiling but there's just not a lot of laughter no and there shouldn't be these are like the worst dad jokes but it's such a non sequitur of like taking you out of the movie that you and i know how these movies work man and yeah. it's so obvious that like this kid doing the stand-up is, is associated with the filmmakers this is the, like i said it's the producer's nephew or this just doesn't happen. This doesn't happen because they wanted it in in the script. Like this is a whole other situation going on here. Someone owed someone a favor, Chris. Yes. Someone owed someone a favor and someone gave Jag Mundra an extra 10 grand for the budget and was like, my kid needs four or five minutes of screen time to do his stand up. In a horror movie, you do not need an extended stripper sequence followed by an extended stand-up comedy sequence that feature none of the main characters doing anything. It just kills the momentum. But for yeah. such a bizarre, absurdly paced and acted movie, uh, it, it adds something to it. It's additive. Yeah. <laughs> it is additive to what this experience is. It creates the surreal environment. But then, dude, when we do get back to our main characters, it's still super weird because it's Beth and Vera walking through the cemetery and Vera being curious about her own brother's sex life. Like, yeah. tell me what you like with Roger. And Beth's like, yeah, not only will like? I tell you, but this is the piece of dirt where he was inside of me. Yeah. It's so <laughs> unsexy, too. You know, like if, if if like she was like, oh, you know, he took me to a friend's mansion. Look at this place. Wow. Maybe. Right. Or, hey, we did something wild. We did it on the Ferris wheel. You know, but it was like right here. See that patch of dirt in this dark yeah. cemetery? That's where we banged. That's it's that's a weird thing for a sister to even care about. It's a weird thing for a friend to brag about. Oh, my God, man. And then, you know, um, Vera sees the hand coming out of the dirt. Right. And grabs it and is like, oh, Beth, you're playing another practical joke on me and pulls out the corpse of her dead boyfriend, Brian. Right. And that's which. Yeah. And, and she. Right. Beth is, is trying to say, like, I didn't do a prank. I didn't do a prank this time. But girl who cried wolf. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, it's a big difference from uh, or, or not a big difference, I, I guess, in Vera's mind to go from like, here's a fake spider to, hey, I buried your boyfriend in dirt. E e yes. Equal levels That's of a much pranked. more, much more serious, darker uh, prank. Classic Beth prank. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> she freaks out. And, and what's funny is that then Vera goes. And straight to the barn because she assumes it's Tommy. 
Tom, she assumes Tommy murdered Brian. And uh, then as soon as they get close, even though she dragged Beth this whole way, Vera just goes, just stay here, Beth. It's a family yeah. matter. Just stay here, Beth. It's a family matter, okay? Some family. Great. It Beth is stuck out in the cold now while you confront your weirdo grandpa and your brother. Yeah, you're going to see a cult and you're okay leaving your friend out there in, in the dark. Nothing happens to her, actually, but it didn't seem smart to me. Maybe I've yeah. seen more horror movies than uh, Vera. You have, Chris. You're you're a goddamn expert compared to Vera. I mean, we both are. I mean, shit. Yes, we, we have um, our PhDs in schlockology. After tonight, thank you. Yes, <laughs> you you've you've educated me this week, Jim. You've given me this is something. This really is something. I'm surprised I hadn't heard of this more because this is unique as hell. And man, I, the reason I do love it so much is like on repeated viewings when you know the formula, you know everything that's happening, you can really appreciate it for just the fun, bad B movie it is. Yeah. And like I said, like the atmosphere of all the Halloween visuals and goodness, the the music, the strangeness, to me, it's like, you know, a nice cozy blanket in the winter of like, ah, hack-a-lantern, man. Yeah, let's hang out with Tommy and his weird ass family. But the first time watching this, I can't imagine just the amount of like WTF moments of like, wait, what? That's all. Why it is was. this happening? It, yes. So it, and you, you know, just to, I guess, keep it moving in a way. Vera goes into the barn. Grandpa is not happy that she's interrupting the ceremony and basically is like, I know you're my granddaughter, but now you got to die. And she, and she gets tied up and he hands Tommy the knife and he's like, you have to murder and sacrifice your own sister now. And for Tommy interrupting. doesn't. They weren't planning on killing anyone before this. But if yeah. it's interrupted, yeah. that's a death sentence. Yeah. I'd hate there to see him on Super Bowl Sunday. It, <laughs> I've got the sensitive. snack. God damn it, woman. The Cowboys <laughs> was just about to score and I missed it. You gotta die. Yeah. Yes. Don't cross grandpa, man. Uh, so, and then huge twist here. Tommy cuts the ropes. He can't kill his sister. Don't be a fool, Tommy. Tommy yeah. isn't so bad after all. Yeah. And, the, so and, get a little uh, and she runs for it. Get a little redemption and her and Tommy both run for it. Cut no, to... Tommy didn't run for it yet. Like she, first she runs for it. Oh, yeah, you're right. And then right. grandpa right. like basically like takes the medallion back and is like, you're out of the club. That's right. Yeah. He gets demoted. He gets kicked out. T Tommy. Tommy has no one really. He's an outcast from the family. And now grandpa doesn't want him either. So. Yeah, that's uh, 30 to 40 years of training Tommy down the drain. Uh, exactly. But, but Chris, maybe this is the motivation for Tommy to finally move out of the basement and get, and get, get his a, life together. Get a job. Yeah. Um, so gotta, everybody should stop off. mooching off their mom. Well, Roger has a yeah. job. Roger has a job. Yeah. We go back to the party. Um. Actually, there's a lot of like filler here because there's like a, a lady dancing with a snake. There's the mom lighting a jack-o'-lantern at home. Like, none of this yeah. is important at all. And then um, a random lady goes into the bathroom at the party and the yes. devil follows. And the lady doesn't mind at all, even though it seems to be a dude. <laughs> right. And just what does she say to her? Uh, she starts saying like, um, oh, she'd seen Roger. And, and and I guess no woman can resist Roger. She's like, I saw a very handsome man. You must know. Yeah. In fact, everyone does. So handsome. I want to look better. Would you mind tightening my corset? That's what guys like. She says something yeah. like that. Yeah. And the killer accommodates her and then just. Uh, 
breaks off her air supply by 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 I thought that that's it what so it was going to be, Jim. And then he does pull out the knife. But he pulls out a knife and the scene just yeah. cuts. Like a lot of these yeah. scenes do as soon as there's like that moment. So there's no reaction. We don't get to see like the woman go like, oh, nothing like that. It's just a stab to the back. Boom, we're done. I'll take him home. So can you help me? It's this corset. You know, those men like them hard and firm. So tighten it up. Weird. Yeah, man. And then Beth and Vera make their way into the bathroom. They see the dead girl, but think she's just passed out. That's true. That's true. They do. Uh, they ignore just, that. Yeah. And then right before that, just to be clear, they had uh, Vera and Beth had first run to Roger. Roger oh, yeah. and the cops bust into the barn. It's dark. It's it's empty. And they just all stand around for a long time silently pointing their guns. It's like somebody forgot to say their line. And then finally, somebody just goes. I don't see anybody here. <laughs> it's like, no shit. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's an example Sparn of is empty. editing style. Like, like yeah. I was like going like, what's going to happen? Like, they're all just standing there. Yeah. I don't see anything. <laughs> this is. This is just poor filmmaking, Chris. This it is really just... was. Um, but yeah, so so Beth and Vera don't think that that dead girl just sitting there, clearly dead, is dead. Right. Uh, I don't know. Vera must like leave to take a shit or something because Beth is alone for a moment, and the devil strangles her. Yeah, Beth gets taken out. It's kind of off screen. Like it's implied that she's about to be strangled. And then, yeah. And then we cut back to Vera realizing that the two ladies are dead. Yes, man. We're, dude, uh, Throughout this movie, Vera just keeps discovering dead bodies everywhere. Like this is her role in the movie is just discovering corpses. She comes across three and out of like eight kills, that's, that's a pretty good ratio for like how many she yeah. comes across and she never believes yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. She never believes it. Yeah. Uh, we're almost done, though, because at this point uh, at the party, basically two devils show up. There's the devil that clearly just killed everyone and a second devil. I guess the second Grandpa. devil is Grandpa, right? As the devil. Because yeah. we see that it has like the plaid shirt. He, you can. You, yeah, he's rocking the plaid still, the flannel. But the second they start having a fight. It's like one of these like comedies where the stunt man is super obvious, like because all this of a is, sudden High Pike goes from sort of an older squat gentleman to like a totally thin fit fighter. Right. It, it's right. it's insane. I, I was like, what did they just try to pull on me? And the yeah. two devils have a fight. Yes. And also, man, the the stunt man playing the mom killer again i mean it's an, obviously a male it clearly person. is two stuntmen yeah right and boy and boy man does grandpa get murdered very quickly and easily yeah not such a yeah, badass just, or a scary guy at all yeah he gets taken out and falls off the uh you know the the, the stairs and then in his final breaths he passes on the satanic power to roger roger Right. In a movie where nothing magical has actually happened yet, all of a sudden, as Grandpa's dying, you know, he does his I love you to, to Roger Sport, <laughs> and there's like a glowing red light. I go, oh, so magic is real in this movie. That would have been nice to know that, like, that was their motivation. Yeah. Like, you know, the cult yeah. actually does get abilities or powers of some sort. Yes. Seems well, Chris, important. in death, in death, you know, Grandpa can manifest the power of Satan into a hand gesture that goes into the consciousness of one of his kin. Is it not that obvious? It's 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 right there for you. This might have honestly been the moment that I 
laugh the hardest in this movie though because okay so like the 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 first devil has fallen down is dying it's grandpa you know they take the mask off roger is there and is like you know oh grandpa you know and then after all of that Roger like looks up and the first devil is still like running away in this yes, small yes. hall and Roger just yes. shoots him in the back. And yes. I was like, was this devil just sort of like tippy toeing yes. away? Like maybe they won't notice me if I go really slow. Oh dude. It's like a Looney Tunes moment because I when laughed, you see I the other like, devil, the you're like, still there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. It's awesome. It yeah. was like the logic of like, an early Flash supervillain, like the Flash goes so fast that if I move so slow, he won't even know that I'm moving. I, right. I, I just, I literally laughed, like, because it wasn't like it was that long, but it had been some time to like unmask yeah. and react to Grandpa dying. And, you know, it was like 20 feet away. <laughs> the, 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 the first devil's running for the doors. <laughs> yeah. Just bad. It's a it's a comedy moment, man. It's a cartoon moment. Um, uh, but luckily, Roger's a good shot because he does hit the killer in the back. We see the killer stumble out of the venue. We follow the killer for a long time, like stumbling through the woods and the shocking reveal, which they didn't have the actress who played the mom for this shot. I don't know if you noticed this. No. Um, dude, in the final, in the reveal, when the cloaked figure goes down on the ground yeah, and we're just, I saw how cameras hovering above her. She takes the cloak off. You see from, we don't get a reveal of her face and it's an obvious, really big fake blonde wig. The, 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 this is in the lore of the movie. The actress was not available for that one shot. That's hilarious. So that's someone else. That's maybe a guy or a stunt man with the big wig. And then, we cut to the next shot, which is mom's face. Totally different shot of her walking out of, you know, that area. But Got the it. reveal shot of our killer, Chris, yeah. in a movie. Is just is a not... stuntman from behind. Yes. So Aspiring stupid. filmmakers watching our show, by the way, don't do that. That's a bad don't, reveal. Don't, I did notice how like do it that. was done. I didn't assume that it wasn't her, but I was kind of surprised. I was going like, this is the reveal. Uh, yes. But then, like in the next shot, I saw that actress, so I didn't, I didn't put it together in that moment. Uh, yeah. And she goes to to her husband's grave. She's, she's about to die, and Tommy walks up. Tommy's still around, not doing much in this movie, to be honest. And and just hugs her as she dies and says, "I love you, mom." I only wanted to, to keep my family. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. They get to have a little I love you moment. And then you wouldn't love her if, if uh, you just found out that she killed your girlfriend. That's true. Oh, shit. He never learns. Wow. That's true. He probably wouldn't love that. <laughs> Chris, I'm pitching it right now. Hackle Lantern part two, Tommy's Revenge. Oh, okay. Sold. Not against the mom because the mom's dead, but I'm getting Tommy's revenge against the, the town. I, well, there would be somebody to get revenge again against, I guess, because now we get our surprise final shot. You know, our final scare because it's a horror movie. The cult is still around and the leader is. We welcome the night. Roger is now taken over for grandpa. Okay. <laughs> that was Cut my reaction. Credits. Okay. Cut to credits and very important, you guys, we get the full You're the Devil's Son song in the credits by DC LaCroix, my favorite band of all time. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got a DC LaCroix poster in my studio. Do you really? I got the soundtrack. No, I'm kidding. But okay. how would you be concerned, Chris, if I like whipped out a record and you're like, you're really into this band, like not ironically, like if, you're really. If all of a sudden you had like posters <laughs> and shirts and like, you know, like a, a self-made action figure of Tommy, I'd start going like, wasn't that special, Jim? But uh, yeah, it was yeah. it was enjoyable uh, once I 
got past about 20 to 20 minutes or so of being very confused as to exactly what this was going to be. Uh, oh, sure. And once yeah. I embraced that it was a movie on the level of, you know, a troll two or something like that. Uh, and that logic just went out the window. I was able to enjoy it for each scene being unexpected. It's not scary, yeah. but it did constantly surprise me with its break in logic. Completely. That's a great way of describing it. And it's, this is another perfect one. I always recommend these kind of movies of like, have your friends over at night during the Halloween season, drink some beers, have some snacks, put this on and just laugh if, and just enjoy the strangeness, you know. If you and your friends can riff on it while it's playing, I think that that would be a very fun experience because I think that oh, yeah. people would also just like laugh at the absurdity of certain statements and deliveries and reveals. Reveals. Yeah. Uh, right. And also, man, everybody so crazy. in your crew would be doing their own impression of grandpa. That would go on it's so fun after to- the movie's over. You and your friends would, will still be talking like grandpa because it's dang such dang a cartoon. There you go. It's such a cartoonish, ridiculous performance that days later you're going to be calling your friends and being like, Grandpa, <laughs> as you know, I'm your grandson. I'm listening to you on the phone. <laughs> Grandpa can't have any fun on Halloween. He has like a the southern. Everybody need like, to raise a little hell on Halloween, <laughs> but you ain't gonna let Grandpa have no fun. <laughs> Hi, Pike. We love you. I, it's so funny though. Like the idea that uh, Grandpa spent uh, probably over a decade grooming Tommy to be the leader of the cult. And then all he had to do was touch his devil horns to Roger's head to turn like a goody two shoes into like the leader of a satanic cult. I was like, seems like a waste of time, grandpa. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, was grandpa wrong in who he chose. All he had to do Uh, was go for the son that like in our first scene with him goes like, give me your candy or I'll blow your brains out. Right. We could have guessed from there that maybe that kid was off. The whole family oh, is yeah. weird. Yes. Literally, the whole family should possibly all be in jail. <laughs> They're all total creeps that are okay with yeah. a lot of weird stuff. It's well, another, you know, Hack Lantern part two, uh, Tommy and Vera, you know, what's their adventures after this? It's like, can we get that as an Amazon Prime show, please? Like, yeah, I, I'm give, willing give to. Eight episodes of uh, Tommy and Vera yeah. battling Roger and his forces of darkness. Yeah. And and Hollywood, Chris and I are willing to come on and consult on this and be in the writer's room. And we're willing. We, we, do, we do have a, a, a larger, you know, fee that we charge for these kind of services, but you can take that here. out we're- of the movie's uh, props and blood and special effects budget. <laughs> and uh, we'll just whip up whatever we have lying around that day. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but damn yeah. it, Chris, I'm going to, I'm going to put my foot down and say, all the tattooed buttocks in our series are going to be done in a more serious, professional manner. That's my trash movie guarantee to everyone. And and, and you're willing to do that yourself? You're willing to do the body yes. painting of, of these models? Yes. yes. And, I'll, and I'll end it there before I get canceled. You probably should. And I'll come <laughs> up with creative kills of like modern things that we have lying around. Like no garden cultivators. We're going to be like gonna strangle you with this mouse yeah yes thank you yeah uh hack a lantern we're, we're, we're thinking we're a good team guys check it out and then as you're confused watching it pop it on a second time and just realize like okay this is something special again you know we haven't mentioned this in a while tubi has a bunch of great stuff if you're willing to deal with a few ads You've got like this access to this free library of a massive amount of weird horror stuff. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Well, we should move on to plugs then uh, because this was obviously the best movie ever. We strongly recommend it. And uh, (laughs) I bet I can guess what you might want to plug. Guys, the Kickstarter defective comics presents Savage Street Vigilante. You all know it. You love it. But spread the word for me if you don't mind. The campaign ends on Halloween on October 31st. And uh, 
It's been a wild and fun ride so far, man. I'm, I've been excited about it. I'm and, so happy uh, for you. It, yeah, it's doing it's well. Been, it's I hope cool. you can push it to some uh, new heights. You just unlocked a new tier with a Scotty Young cover. So that's pretty yes. exciting. Uh, yep. And I'll plug uh, Comic Tropes. I just uploaded a video uh, where I got to interview Jeff Darrow. Uh, I was really pleased with how it went. I think that uh, he shared a bunch of interesting things about Mobius and Frank Miller and Shaolin Cowboy that you've hopefully never he heard before. Uh, I'll also mention that we'll have another Halloween episode this month. We're, we're really putting uh, Jamie to work, but next episode is a special guest. Uh, that'll be out very soon after you see this one. So I'm excited to share that with you. And if by any chance this comes out just before New York Comic-Con, um, Jim is tabling, mm -hmm. right? And I will be there on Saturday. Yes, I'm a D26 and artist alley. And uh, please come by and say hi. And Chris, I'll be seeing you in person. It's going to be awesome. Of course. Absolutely. Looking forward to it, man. Thank you for introducing me to uh, a new piece of schlock. Uh, dare I say yeah. a possible classic. This is this is interesting. It, you, it is in my mind and it. heart, Chris. It is. But again, it's like you got to give this one a chance and marinate with it. But the vibes for Halloween season, I think, are almost perfect. Nice. Hey, folks, we really appreciate you watching. Uh, and thank you, as always, to our amazing editor, Jazzy Jamie Woods. We love you, Jazzy. And J Jazzy celebrated a birthday yesterday, which we celebrated on Ink Pulp Live. So this month is Jazzy's birthday. Let's give it up to him. Leave a nice comment, please. And, and uh, we appreciate it. Yes. All right, everybody. Keep it trashy. Trash Movie Bonanza. Like and subscribe. Thank you.